crowded board. Yeah, pretty good end game here. <laughs> so it's black to play. This is Rubenstein against Cohen, which I think we might have seen this game earlier, right? Because didn't Rubenstein play Cohen and we looked at that game? I don't remember that. I remember Rubenstein. I don't remember Cohen. All right, so the que- this is from 1911. The question is, black to play, is G5 a good move? That's the question. Kangaroo said, first thought, G5. <laughs> so you're asking the question, is that a good move? Yes. Right. That's, that's what the question is. Okay. I'm just reiterating it. Yeah. That is a tough question. Couple of pins, huh? Mm hmm. Pin the tail on the donkey, I guess. Doing some calculating, but mm-hmm. I'm not really getting anywhere. Let's see. Hey, it's Indo. How's it going, Indo Queen? Hey, Indo Queen, how's it going? I'm doing all right, Indo. Just looking at some puzzles. The question is, is G5 a good move for black? Karen is very focused. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it is. What did you calculate? Well, I mean, if, it seems like F would take. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I guess they don't have to take. I don't really look at what happens if they don't take. <clears throat> well, what if F takes? Okay, well, then you're attacking their queen with your pawn, but um, if they take rook, mm-hmm. um, well, what would be the next move, though? Because now they could take back or take the queen. Hmm. Yeah, there's too many possibilities. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one possibility for white in that position. White has to play queen takes rook on f2. Because if white takes the queen and black takes on f1, you've lost a rook. Right. I took a rook and a queen. You only took a queen. So after g5, f takes g5, rook takes f2, queen takes f2. Okay. Is forced. Black could continue with rook takes f2 g takes h6 so black sacrificed a pawn got his rook into white's business on f2 even still i don't know that seems like white should be happy because if black goes like later rook b2 or even right at the end position rook b2 we could play rook f1 and get that f file for ourselves King g8, bishop h5 to play uh, rook f7. I can't picture all that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, black loses a pawn but gets some compensation. I don't know that it's worth it. I don't even know that white would necessarily play fg. Right, that's the other thing. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to. And even black doesn't have to play rook f2 at the end. He could play rook f2, queen f2, then queen g7 instead of taking on f2. Which, that's an interesting move, because queen g7 keeps white's queen hanging and also attacks e5, which white can defend with queen b2 to defend e5 and not lose the queen. 
This would also be a pawn sacrifice for black, where black gets some compensation for it. <laughs> now, some of it I could visualize intelligent, but some I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's normal. You, you can only visualize so many moves. Well, I'll show you what I was talking about then. Yeah. If g5, f takes, rook takes, right? If we take here, black's up a rook. Right. Rook up. So black has, and white has to do this. And black could take and takes. So this is what I was saying, that black sacrificed the g-pawn, but his rook is really good. And if he plays rook b2, however, to try to take a pawn and queen all his pawns, well, he also could consider like a sacrifice. We could play rook f1 and threaten mate. If he stops it, I was going to go here to try to do this. And then check you and take all your stuff. Then I have a pass d-pawn also. So this looks like it's good for white. Now, black doesn't have to play rook b2, of course, but then how good is the rook here on its own without anything happening? You know, it's just sitting here. It's good, but, you know, you did give me a pawn, and if nothing happens, I'll still play, like, with g4, g5, g6, potentially. Well, even there, I don't really know what's going on here, honestly. But not 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 that this was forced. For example, he like I was saying, he doesn't have to take the queen. He could okay. go here. The queen and pawn are hanging. But we can defend with queen b2, defending the pawn. This is what I was saying. This still gives up the file. And black sacrificed a pawn for some compensation, I guess. Uh, maybe like h6 to try to win back the pawn. Looks playable there. Definitely. Yeah, definitely looks playable there, actually. So maybe that's even a better variation for black. Now, white doesn't have to take. Um, white could consider to play... I mean, white... I don't think white wants to see GH. All right. So if white doesn't take, he's going to make a move to not allow GH to be very strong. Like, for example, you could go here. That looks fine. Solid move. Could even play like rook h2. It also looks pretty good. So it's kind of a weird move g5 because we don't really have to react to it. And if we do react to it, it seems like we're up a pawn. So I don't know. It, you know, to me, it, it doesn't seem like it would be a great move. But I don't know. It doesn't also it doesn't seem like I found the right variation. Mm -hmm. Seems like I just gave normal analysis. All right, yeah. we're ready to look at yeah, what let's he see, says. Yeah, let's see what it is. See what Selman says. Black's position is extremely uncomfortable. He has no space. His bishop's mm -hmm. horrible. White's d pawn's a nightmare. But he thought he saw a way to end his troubles tactically. He played g5, question mark. So here he gave up, the, he desperadoed the queen in this variation. Oh, I see, yeah. But now, see, I didn't really think that was worth it because it's just, now it's White's turn, so you gave up a tempo here. Although I will admit, you know, it doesn't look too bad to give up the tempo because what's White going to do with that extra tempo? Mm. Maybe H5, G6 or something? Let's see what he did. Black must have entered this thinking, I've exchanged pieces and I have a rook on the 7th. My position is really improved. Rook D1. This must have burst his bubble. It turns out King G1 is crushing. An exchange of rooks leaves white with the winning bishop endgame. I see. So if he like goes backwards and we play rook f1, you're going to have to be doomed to passivity. Or even actually that forces a trade of rooks. Because it was rook f8 check forces the trade of rooks in that position. Wait, show me what you mean. If white plays king g1, yeah. and you keep your rook on the f file, I'll play rook f1, forcing the trade of rooks. Oh, because your king will be on g1. Yeah, so if you go here, I'll check you, and then you have to go back, and I trade rooks. So, okay. I mean, this doesn't seem like it's totally crushing. King g7 is what he played. 
Rook B2, this is maybe something I was thinking about. Rook F1, so yeah, this is what I talked about in a different variation because I didn't play Queen H4. But uh, black is getting counterplay. He's going to take this and push all his pawns, but you know, my, my rook's pretty good too. I can come in and hit this, and then I got a pass pawn, and you mm -hmm. also have to worry about your e6 pawn hanging. So this is a lot of counterplay. For example, king g7, rook f6 to hit e6, takes, and white wins with that pawn. So he played king g7. This is sort of preparing to do this, but covering, but even still, you could go to f6, so it doesn't change much. King g1, x clan. He played rook f8 and rook f1. After the trade of rooks, black resigned. Black has no answer to white's plan of king b6. Like that. Who's, so people are talking. Oh, it's yeah. Scottish Demon Goat. Hey, Scottish Demon Goat. So, yeah, I thought, um, so this was what was played in the game? Yeah, and Black resigned. Okay. Because this plan is too strong. Uh, so if we were supposed to see all this from G, I don't know where he was. Well, I think that we could have seen, at least up to this point, Mm-hmm. And the idea is to understand who's benefited from that exchange. The, the idea of rook d1, I don't know why rook d1 is so necessary. Like, can I play rook e1 or c1 or b1 or any rook move to play king g1? Seems like I can. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Yeah. But... To understand that white's going to be better or winning here is the point of the puzzle, really. It's basically, it's a lot of tactics to end at a position, and then you have to decide the evaluation of the position. But this is the right idea, to kick the rook away. And then either you give up the f-file or you trade rooks, and either way white's winning. He decided to trade rooks, and then resigned. Uh, note that king f8, trying to bring the king over to the queen side, though this would lose even if it was able to happen, bishop h5 prevents it. If you go here, we'll trade, and now we get two passed pawns, so we're gonna, gonna make a queen. So you can't actually run the king over, even though, and it would even lose if you could, but... It's impossible to stop the king from decisively penetrating to b6. So yeah, that's a classic bad bishop scenario. Also, what about rook g2? Rook d1 to stop d4. Yeah, that's possible. Because he could try to get some desperate counterplay. But even like after rook e1, if you play d4 and I take, that doesn't look right. So I think rook e1 probably should win too. Rook g2, then we could play rook f1. Which might, that might also win in a similar way, but it didn't really help you, you know, to play rook g2, rook f1 check. Yeah. All right, let's look mm. at the next one, huh? I'm ready for the next one. Yeah. Why wasn't Ben invited to the U.S. Senior Championships? I don't know. I think you have to play... Do you have to play in the uh, state senior events? Mm, that, I don't know. Because, like, for example, we sent our top senior to the U.S. Senior Championship. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure about it. Was it Dobby Day? <laughs> it could have been. It could have been. Um, Good luck, Dobby Day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the rules are for playing in that Finn Bongo. He didn't want to play anyway. <laughs> There's an FM playing in it. Shelby Guts. Um, yeah, if Ben is on here at some point, we can ask him. I think you have to win uh, one, of, one of the state championships, but I'm not positive. So we had a Georgia state champion that we sent. 
This is white to play and win. This is Lev Albert against Lerner from 1978. Excuse me, 1978. A little hiccup in the middle of my speech. I'm oh, sorry. Say it again. I won't. You have to. Oh, okay. <laughs> white to play and win. Okay. This one has less stuff on the board than the last one. It's more of an end game, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I already got it, actually. Although I didn't calculate anything, so, you know, that's one caveat. Wolf lost to Getz in like 12 moves. Dang, that's tough. Knight f8, that's illegal, but good suggestion. Finally an illegal suggestion. Where Scottish Demon go with b6, double x clown. Oh, knight d8. That's more legal. I like it. Yeah, I sort of have two moves that I am considering, and they're sort of similar in a way. In some ways, they're not similar, I guess. I had some ideas on that. I was thinking knight could take on maybe c5. I like that. And then you could push the b pawn. Yes. And then one of the, one of the pawns gets out of the way. And then you... How did you find such a great suggestion? I don't know. I would either... I would, this is what I, That was my first thought. But then I yeah. thought maybe we could play b4 first, even. Hmm. And then I was, like, not sure. I was not really sure. I just wasn't sure. But if if B4 first, you can play CB, C5. Then what? Knight D7 runs into C6. So that's not good. Yeah, now I don't know which one's winning. I mean, it has to be Knight takes C5 followed by B4 or B4 first. Those are the two moves that I was thinking of that were pretty similar. Let's see if I can defend against any of them. Knight c5, bc, b4. a, b. I don't really know if a, b would help. a5, knight d7, a6. I mean, that seems like it's losing. Just going to queen the a pawn or the d pawn. So what was that? That was knight takes c5? Yeah. All right, so b4 <laughs> first. Then, uh, I don't know, maybe some weird move like king d4. Not that that's weird, but... I mean, b a... That's going to be a pawn up. But that might not win. So in the b4, king d4, b a, b a... Knight a5, e4. I don't know. I don't really like that variation. That doesn't make any sense, any of those moves. So I don't know. I, I can't really find a defense to either b4 or knight c5. Prophylaxis says knight c5, then b4. Well, what else? b4 first. <laughs> that's the only thing. Uh, no, that... That's the only thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll do it. Okay. Why is knight a5 worse than knight c5? Um, yeah. I actually thought I had a reason for that. So what was that question? Why is knight a5 worse than knight c5? It does, oh, okay, it, it is. It took it a second. I guess knight a5 uh, 
it should be the same you know it should be mm-hmm. could be but is it the answer is yes maybe in case they don't take it's better to play knight c5 i agree with that because then they could move their knight to d7 to, or to e4 or try to come in some other way well that'll lose to d7 though uh oh yeah <clears throat> oh that's right because yeah you could be a pawn up here with white and not win like if i take a pawn it's not necessarily winning mm -hmm. usually it will win but there aren't that many pawns on the board and if i could like move my king back to d4 with black and play pawn to e4 king e5 i can take your your past pawn sometimes so I don't know, but yeah, all three of those moves seem like they could work, and I can't really refute any of them. They all seem like they win. Knight c5, knight a5, and b4. But I'd probably play knight c5. Yeah, knight c5 defends d7, right? I mean, if you're going to take one of the pawns, that's the more natural move. I mean, unless you have some tactic that it mm -hmm. makes it so it doesn't work. All right, well, let's, let's see, see what he has to say, yeah. I think it's knight c5. That's what I voted for. At first glance, one could easily think black's better, since his king is far more active than white's. His past e pawn is more dangerous than white's on d6, because it's blockaded by the knight. And on top of that, white's knight is out of play on b7. Yet white can force a win by taking advantage of black's king's absence from the queen's side. Knight takes c5, double x clam. He doesn't analyze the other moves we talked about. Mm. I'm sure Mr. Lerner couldn't believe his eyes. B, C, B, 4. A, B. This isn't my main line, but I just thought this was winning without any, mm -hmm. you know, any to do. He gives some other variations. Knight, D, 7. B, A. King, F, 2 to try to queen. Knight b8, king c3, x clam, not falling for a6 takes check, and knight c6. Okay. Now he can't go here check. He could go here, but it's not check. Mm -hmm. So we're queen. So that variation loses. And he gave one more variation. BC. No, instead of knight d7. BC. I mean, CB, obviously. C5, check. So you can move his king up. Knight e4. This doesn't look like this is going to work. <laughs> Almost worked, but not quite. Now he can resign. So after b4, he played a, b. And then they both queened. All right, so this isn't clear, but certainly white's much better. Or winning, I guess. So he has to avoid queen exchanges, right? Like if he goes here and check, we'll pick up the queen. So he's trying to sort of avoid that. He'll never uh, trade queens here. Not willingly, at least. Also, if b3 check, trying to deflect, and then check... White will win by bringing his king up, assuming you check me. Don't try to checkmate me. I got that defended. So he played queen a1. Still tough to try to escape all the checks. Queen 
Queen D1 X clam. Not falling for promotes double question mark. It was a noise. Yay, thank you, Nicola. This actually is a draw by perpetual check. He can't avoid the checks. Go here, I check you there. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Nicola, for the 1,000 bits and also subscribing. Nice. Yay, thank you. Yeah, he's got too many checks. It's impossible to run away. So you gotta yeah. be careful. King G4 is a tricky move. Mm -hmm. So instead, he played queen d1. Queen takes c4 check, king e3 check. And black resigned. Now there's no way to stop queen, and he won't have perpetual check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really good uh, example here. But I'm still wondering about other moves. Market Sands Yay, cheered 100 Yay, thank bits. you, Market Sands. Let's see what the engine says, because I couldn't figure it out. It says knight c5 is the only winning move. b4, a, b, a5, b, a, knight c5. Oh, so we run out of pawns is one problem. No more pawns. Oh. I mean, that handily refuted the variation. There's no other move I would have played with white and you have to go here but yeah now uh, black's better but mm -hmm. should draw okay what about knight a5 yeah it just doesn't take right knight d7 it says equal this is what i was talking about you can be a pawn up and not winning right yeah so you might if if in in this case you'd rather have the knight here so we can promote our pawn where knight a5 doesn't doesn't do that obviously Okay. Very interesting example there. Can you show the starting position once more, says Finn Beingold. Here it is. What if he plays e4 immediately instead of taking on b4? I guess I'd go here. And this will probably be the same as playing knight d7 that variation. For example, I guess you would go here. Actually, this would be the same as the game, right? No, no. No, you're a tempo faster because you didn't play knight d7. So yeah, what about e4 first? That's a good question. I guess I could take this now. I don't know if that changes anything. It might. It might. I can even push this pawn now, which is better because then when I queen, I'm threatening your knight. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. that's what he would do, certainly. If e4, we'll take this pawn so that we can push like that and attack your knight when we queen. And even if you take, we should win. I mean, we're going to win this for sure because I gave up a tempo, so that would be resigns. So yeah, it would be BC, not BA. BA is not going to win. I don't think. Oops. I don't think it would win, at least. Because now it's White's turn, but you're actually a knight up. And I can't win your knight immediately. Like by forking or anything. I mean, I could do this, but I'm not winning it right away. I can like, play queen checks until I defend with a check. And then I can take your pawn or continue playing the game up a knight. So you got to play BC in that case. That was a good variation, though. That was a good variation, though. Yeah. Interesting, interesting endgame. Night endgames are tough. Definitely. Night endgames got a lot of tricks. Hey, you're out, off the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Okay. It cut, cut off. It's a little cut off. Um... Oh, I've done that before. I've already shown this shown off this uh it actually says end game at the top oh yeah i remember yeah that. I, I was like i don't know what it says <laughs> and it's already like it says end game oh yeah all right let's look at the next one already 
Scottish demon goat begging for a sub. Classic goat move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody could give you a go um a gub, a sub <laughs> a goat. That would be nice. That would be the greatest sub of all time. <laughs> oh, I already know this one. <laughs> oh, you do? Yes, yes, yes. This is a very, very famous one. Oh, thank you, Thaddeus. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice. Ask and ye shall receive. Is this the guy from Ben's lectures? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Although I would call them Spencer's lectures. That's true. <laughs> Thank you for that gift set. Unless Thaddeus. they're talking about like Dave you better <laughs> talking be... in the background. Yeah, that could mean. <laughs> yes. I don't know. All right. Anyway, let's back to the puzzles. Black then. to play and win. So black to play and win. I have a side cramp again, like right here. Dang it! What is causing that? I'm fighting with Twitch because it won't let me do anything. I hate when that happens. Wow, dude, so you do really exist. Well, pretty sure. Can't say for certain I exist, but it seems like pretty likely. Yeah. Now the Scottish demon goes waiting for that gub. <laughs> yeah, Hobo Dog knows about this one. This is a, a famous one. Too famous. You can probably find a Ben lecture with you talking in the background or Ben talking about you. Not probably. I remember he actually, it was my birthday, and he did a Chess Kid video about a couple of my games for Chess Kid. So uh, maybe that's what you're talking about. There's some games I didn't even know I, I won, but I won them. Anyways, did you solve this one yet? It's so easy if you already know it. Yeah, I don't know this one. So I'm just looking at it. So famous game here. My dad talks about this all the time, actually. Mm. Really. I mean, it looks like Black uh, has winning chances. Oh, another gifted sub. Thanks, Xanth. 13. Yay, thank you, Xanth. Thank you, Xanth, for giving that to Sandy. Right, let me see. Wow. Up two pawns. Is, you, this has some winning chances in an opposite colored bishop endgame. And indeed, this this position is winning, but you're going to have to use extraordinary measures in order to collect the win. Isn't a Shirov game. Yes, it is a Shirov game. Shirov has, uh, has black here against Topolov, I believe. Yeah, Topolov. From a 1998 Linares. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is. I mean, Shirov has a lot of brilliant, uh, brilliant games because that was his style to play as brilliantly as possible, no matter what. But it's kind of funny. His most famous combination, if you can even call it that, is in an opposite color bishop endgame. <laughs> He's mostly known for like checkmating attacks and mm -hmm. and crazy tactics. I guess this is a crazy tactic, so it counts. A crazy tactic. Oh, it's definitely an, an unexpected move. It's probably the move you would expect last. So just what move would you not play? That's a good way to solve it. What's the last move you would play? The worst move mm -hmm. on the board? Um, I mean, bishop takes f6. Well, it's black to play, so that's not right. Oh. Black to play and win. I didn't have it right then. You think white's going to win this? <laughs> no, that's why I was surprised. That would be very surprising. It seems like black, though, it's not as clear-cut. It seems like they could win pretty easily. Well, he's up two pawns, but it's opposite color bishops. Okay. So it's tough to win. I wasn't even looking at the right color. Now you got to wait another minute for me to look at it. Well, try to play the worst move for black. You didn't <laughs> even black. find the worst move for white. Like, bishop e5 is worse than bishop takes f6. Um, 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it hangs a whole bishop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and you don't get a pawn. Okay, yeah. I see that one. They're both bad. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so probably the worst move for black now. Um... Do people get gifted subs randomly, or do they select people? Both. Either way, yeah. Both. So you can't find the move that you would think is the worst for black? Um, I mean, you could go with bishop uh, h3. Now you're talking. The correct <laughs> move. Uh, bishop h3. All right. If white can get his king to e3... Like that. Mm -hmm. Black's pawns will be firmly blockaded and the game will be drawn. Therefore, black must get his king to e4 before white plays king e3. But that's illegal to go here, so we got to move our bishop out of the way. And this stops him from moving his king up because we'll take the pawn then. So this is buying us a, a tempo to go here. TE4 is the idea. For example, if you if you want to play like this, he gives bishop e4, which doesn't even make sense. We could just get oh he wants to attack the pawn still, I get it. But yeah, we got out of the way of we're still in the way of king e4. Because the bishop's here mm -hmm. on e4. And then we'll get king e3 and blockade the dark squares. So bishop h3. Now you can't step up, or if you do this and let me walk in, you're not in time to stop me from going to e4, and then I'll win with king e4. So he takes it. There it is. He even hangs the pawn. White also loses if king e2. F5. See, this is another benefit of the bishop h3 sacrifice. After gh, we have a third passed pawn. Three passed pawns is difficult for these two to handle. Right. Impossible in this case. So he took it. d4. Bishop e7. This stops a3. King d3, x clam. He's trying to get to c2. Or even, in this case, c4. Because king c2 would hang the pawn now. And then here, and Topolov resigned. The finish could have easily been, for example, this. Here. And then there. And white can't stop both pawns. Wow, that was pretty cool. I've never seen that. I don't remember seeing that. Yeah, Bishop H3 is very faint. My dad talks about Bishop H3 all the time. He's always, he's like, if he'll play Bishop H3 in any random position mm -hmm. and say, oh, Shirov would like Bishop I've H3. I've heard him actually yeah. reference it. I just haven't seen it. So now you know it's full circle for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you know exactly what he's talking about. I'll be back in one second, but maybe just check I could chat it up, yeah. All right. West side, walk it out. Bishop h3 is Ben's b6. <laughs> That's true. Let's see if I can set up the next position. This is another Shirov game. But we won't solve it till Karen comes back. It's another Shirov game and it's opposite colored bishops. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? All right, black to play and win. This time, Shirov's white and is losing. Black to play and win. From Beal 1991 against Ulf Anderson. Okay, I mean, <laughs> so you said black to play and win? Mm-hmm. Right. T-shirt bought where? I don't know. I've had this T-shirt for so, such a long time, I don't remember where. Maybe my dad gave it to me, I guess. How am I? I'm doing all right, Xanth. I'm doing great. How's it going, Ivysaur? 
Wait, Shirov lost a game once? <laughs> yeah. He, he lost at least one time to Kasparov. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Who's Ben's favorite GM? Apart from etc. Hmm, probably uh, himself. Unless that's what you mean from etc. Gonna solve before Karen comes back and ruins the stream. <laughs> he meant he'll ruin the stream. Yeah, well, you didn't solve it. Right. So the stream is not ruined. Right. <laughs> <laughs> GM Ken West. Yeah, that might be his favorite GM. Ken West. I think it's it's actually a Nakamura. Well, except for one thing. Oh, somebody typed not Hikaru, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is a big fan of Wesley So and MVL. Anyways, I haven't looked at this position. It's black to play and win. This is Anderson with black against Shirov. Too bad Shirov can't play bishop h3 this time. Just bishop h3 every game. I mean, there's only one move I can look at in this position. I don't know about you. Um... I'm not sure about it. What move uh, were you considering for black? Um, well, it seems like you want to queen the e pawn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was trying to figure out whether if you sacked, if you took on h4 and the king took, whether that would allow you to get in with your king on that side. But yeah, it... that's the only thing I would think about in this position mm -hmm. is bishop h4, king h4, king f5. Right. Get the king in. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we got two pass pawns. You know, the last answer was bishop h3 sacking the bishop. So this is probably bishop h4 sacking the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm on all sorts of levels here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, we can consider bishop h4, king h4, and then uh, e4 with the idea to run the king this way. Mm -hmm. That also seems pretty dang good. Yeah. As opposed to king f5. I like to put, run the king on dark squares because, you know, you've got a white square bishop. Don't want to get checked or something. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So it seems like, okay, let's calculate a little. Bishop h4, king h4, e4, king g4. Or king g3. One of those two. King e5. Now he can play king f2 if he played king g3. But, okay, let's say king f2, king d4, bishop e2. But then I have the a pawn even. I mean, this is just totally winning. Because if you, if you let me take all your pawns, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. If you go here, I can play a4 anyway. Or I can play king b3. I mean, king c3. To a to b two if you go a two. So I feel like it's bishop h four king h four and then e four. That's what I feel like. The only thing about that is, what if then they go um, king f four, or no? I guess it's on h four at that point. Right. Um, yeah, that's exactly my point. Okay, yeah. Because if he plays, e, if we play e4 now, it's king f4, right? Yeah. Then we'll just trade the pawns and mm -hmm. draw. Uh, so, yeah, I think that we have to play the sacrifice and then e4. King f5 looks better. No analysis, just thinks that it's better. <laughs> Why would king f5 be better than king e5 to d4? That's what I'm that? trying to yeah, guess. Yeah, there's no way the king f5 is better. It's just slower. I mean, maybe. Maybe there's some, like, tactical reason that it's better. But if I'm just going off looks and not calculating a specific variation in my intuition, e f e4, king e5, king d4 is the right idea. But maybe there's some tactics that make king f5 work. 
and then or e4 not work in that position and king f5 be, being the only answer which i would assume there's only one answer but i don't know king f5 king g3 you're gonna play e4 anyway and then you're gonna play king e5 so why would i play king f5 then e5 why not just king e5 that's why i like e4 but maybe king f5 yeah i was trying to see if there was a difference too right all right let's see what how we're right bishop h4 x clam king h4 he did play king f5 and he didn't talk about e4 in this position mm -hmm. also we should talk about a lot of stuff though if bishop c2 which doesn't really seem like a testing move but just trying to hold the position and saying i'm down two pawns mm -hmm. bishop e1 king f3 king g5 bring our bishop around town this is still winning i guess see that stops this move so now we you can't play king f2 after king h2 etc well still black has work to do but either my king gets in or you stop me and then my pawn goes forward so it's not particularly great you know it's not particularly great or if you go bishop here i get to push this pawn that yeah. still seems like black has a lot of work to do there but Silman claims it's winning i'm willing to believe that king h4 king f5 King e4, king d3. Yeah, I mean, you can't ever go like this because then uh, my a pawn's going to go. So that's not going to help white. And you have three pass pawns is usually enough to win, as we saw from the previous example. Nice. So why uh, is this worse? I think this should still win. I mean, it's like the same position except it it was like that in the game, mm -hmm. and I have my pawn up and my king here it might be harder for some reason to win because they can like attack the pawn this might be why if see if they attack the pawn and we go taking their pawns they take this pawn mm -hmm. so we might want to keep our pawn on a white square or on a dark square even though it's inconvenient for our king because it you know it takes another tempo to go up here rather than like this just so they can't play bishop c2 in that position our, our pawn won't ever be lost yeah. Or, okay, he played king d3. Yeah, now they can't attack our pawn and, and hope to draw that way. Even that might be losing, though. But this is obviously better than, than letting them take our e-pawn. No doubt about that. So, all right, Shirov, uh, he sacked the bishop in one, and then his opponent sacked the bishop in one. Dang. <laughs> what a life. Whenever it's, whenever it's an opposite color bishop I have... In an endgame, it's just a draw. You can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but they're sacking their bishop, losing, <laughs> winning. It's crazy. Come on. All right, we finished all the very hard tactics. Next is very, very hard. Okay. <laughs> it does say that. And then that's it for the tactics portion. Oh, okay. But then we still have five greatest endgame players of all time. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say? I very, very can... hard? Or... Yeah, I think we can keep going. There are only three in the very, very hard section. Um, Actually, there's only two. I want to try to finish, you know, grind. All right, let's finish the last two then. All right. There's only two in here. Don't even think about solving these last two positions. Just play them over. All right. Is that what he says? Yes, that's what he says. <laughs> well, I mean, I can do that. Or here's another Benko composition. If it's anything like the last one, it shouldn't disappoint. 
I can already imagine it's like stalemate, but the knights win because he's got pawns that aren't stalemate, aren't allowing for stalemate. All right, so white to move and win. A Banco composition. Banco's endgame composition simply blow my mind. You can stare at them for months and never solve them. However, that doesn't matter. What does matter is simply looking at the amazing path to victory that Benko weaves. Knight b5, double x clam. Uh, real, a real key move, which fully deserves two exclamation marks. The knight jump to b5 is counterintuitive since it allows the black king to escape from the mating net, and in addition, it takes the knight further from the threatening pawn that's about to queen. Uh, apparently allowing it to promote. Is this key move necessary? Wouldn't knight e2 win? No. Knight e2 fails. h2, knight a c3, b5. We'll see about queening in the next note to the next variation. b5, knight d4, b4 check x clam. King takes b4, king b2, and black escapes because black's king is out of the trap. He's not going to get mated in the corner now because of this deflection. Okay, so knight b5, so that's why knight b5, it stops b5, b4. King b1. Now let's look at h2. It loses, of course. Knight a, c3. Queen, knight d4. Only move is the check, because it's threatening mate. That's mate. And I guess that's mate. So you got to check. I would never expect this to be winning. For, for white, it looks like you lost. So still, white's threatening this move, which wins the queen now. So queen f2 allows the king an escape square, but it's fork town, I guess. Yep. Done for. You're going to lose. I still have one pawn to win. Really nice. Really nice variation. And there's nowhere else for the queen to go. The queen goes here, it's still forked. Or here, it's forked. <laughs> Any of these squares, it gets forked in those variations. Or here it's forked. Wow, everywhere is a fork. <laughs> yeah, I'll say forks very well. Well, then you'd have a hard time solving this one. <laughs> yeah. Still Amazing theory. that White's winning that, yes. All right, so instead of h2, king b1 is the tougher defense, apparently. Knight a, c3, check. King c2. Knight d4, check, x clam. Hanging the knight on purpose. King d3, x clam. If this check, very important move. King c4, g4, h2, knight g3. King, I mean, I would end the variation here, but he keeps going. King c3, king a4, king c4, g5, check. And now white will win because white queens with check if you run your pawn and I run my pawn. You get to b2, but I queen with check. And then I'll stop your b pawn. And then I'll stop your a pawn, which I already, or h pawn, which I already did. So instead of taking here, because she loses because of that idea, king c3, king d3 rather. Now the knights are forked. But obviously we're going to hang them, right? Knight d1, double x clam. The only way to win. White fails to achieve victory after f4. And black wins, because you can no longer play knight f4 check. If white tries f3 instead of f4, king d2 wins for black. Since knight g1, h2... Knight f3 check is not possible because mm -hmm. we played f3. <laughs> White can try knight f3, but he doesn't win. So 
See, the idea of king a4 is to make it so he has to play king c4 in order to push his pawn. So now that we've provoked you to c4, that's good for us because we promote with check. We saw that idea earlier as well. Now here's Scottish Demon Goat's favorite move. <laughs> now you want to play king a6. We don't want to take because then he'll queen with check. Potentially. Oh, yeah. So king a6 makes more sense. No, he doesn't need to. I didn't think he needed to take it even. With a draw. You can't use your knight to defend the pawn because then we'll queen. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go take it. Okay, so none of those variations were winning. Knight d1 h2 f4 king takes knight not h1 equals knight h1 equals queen wouldn't help could get forked but even here after f5 our pawn is too strong okay it's there yeah it's too strong so king takes d4, knight f2 to stop the queen. If king e3, knight check will pick up the pawn and win. So king c3. And wins. Trade queens, queen or pawn. I should note that he never noticed, he never talks about this, but like here, for example, white could make either of these king moves. Mm -hmm. He plays here so that you have to play king c2 in order to push the pawn. Otherwise, I'm stopping you from queening. So you have to go here. And that's why black loses at the end, because we get to check your king here and trade queens by force. If white were to play king a4 first, like here... It might not win. Now we can't force the queen trade immediately. This even could still win, but obviously you just do the thing that forces the queen trade, and then the game's over. Because you make another queen. And that, you know, that's, that's what's going to happen. B6 double X clan. Who is forking whom? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously ridiculous. Nobody would ever solve that. That's why he didn't let us solve it. Yeah. <laughs> Good job by Banco. Was that a study? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I thought he said a study. Yeah, from 72. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that he made these studies before computers existed, because how did he know that for sure that it would work, right? Yeah. But some old compositions do have, like, answers that the composer didn't notice. That does happen sometimes. Here's, yeah, a, I'm here's sure. another Banco composition. Okay. This is from 87. White to play and win. Even though white's down a piece. So. <laughs> this is a crazy position because white is queening all these pawns. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about that. White is queening all the pawns. And black is far away from queen, queenton. Which might be confusing because this structure might make it seem like white's going this way, but that's not right. Mm -hmm. White's going that way. All right. White seems to be in trouble since he's a piece down. He faces mating threats, and his past pawns are frozen in their tracks. Queen d1 x clam. White threatens queen d8. And if bishop takes, you take equals knight, fork. Okay, well, even I'm not even sure that was winning, but <laughs> I guess it was. Mm -hmm. Queen d1. So, queen a8. I was thinking that too. Yeah, get out of there. Get out of that fork. Mm -hmm. If queen e8, white must avoid queen d8 since the position will be drawn after bishop takes promote to a queen, king d5, 
bishop or b7 rather queen e7 x clam setting up for discovered this way discovered checks i suppose queen check never play f6 check That's it. That's the end of the variation. I'm just trying to understand why I can't keep trying to win. Right? Mm -hmm. Is this mate? It's mate. It's mate. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't see that. Yeah, I was looking at this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just run away. But then I found mate and one. Pretty good. So then you have to go back and then get perpetual checked. If you can't take here because of mate. So if queen e8, queen d8 does not win. However, hopefully there is a winning variation here. Queen e2 check. Take that, because why not give up our queen, right? b7, now, so now we're getting our queen back, and then maybe even a second queen. And now black can resign. No more checks and we're gonna queen. Dang. Wow, these are so complicated. All right, we're only getting started, too. <laughs> queen a8. That's why they're very, very hard. Yeah. Queen d8 x clamp. If queen b3 check, king e7, queen <laughs> e3 check, king d6, queen d3 check. He says this isn't nearly as strong. Sort of implies to me that it could still win. But anyways... That's not really relevant for us. Yeah. Queen d the idea. Takes b7, frankly, obviously. That was too easy. A remarkable situation. Two pawns beat the queen and bishop. The game, the game comes down to a race between the past pawns. Black tries to trap the white king and push his own pass pawns in this way. Yeah, even this side wouldn't be sure is winning. Knight f6. Oh, what, what am I doing here? f3. Oh, I missed a move. Knight f6. Weak is knight b6 because of king e6. Which stops you from trying to... Actually, it just stops you from moving almost anywhere. And then I can promote my pawn. Knight f6 allows us to go this way or this way if we need to stop your pawn. Or if you just push your pawn, we can check and then stop it like that. And now we'll win with our last pawn before you queen. So basically, an uh, unsolvable, insane puzzle that you would expect from Benko. Mm -hmm. The idea to play queen d8 is the key idea. And the key variation, of course, is when everything is hanging <laughs> like this. <laughs> yes. And then making a knight. And then yeah. even winning this is difficult. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. Definitely. Definitely a cool one. I wonder if that, that seems like maybe I have seen that before, but I just never realized it. It's possible. Benko's, uh, you know, compositions were pretty famous. Yeah, like somebody posted it somewhere. Oh, a twenty dollar donation! Yay! Thanks, Walk Walk uh, Walkie TV. Thank you, Walkie TV. Yeah. See, it was that wasn't fair. You got to say it after I had already stumbled over saying <laughs> it. <laughs> I just echo in you without the stutter. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So we finally finished all those puzzles. We still have part of part nine. It's the five greatest endgame players of all time. Lasker. Probably Rubenstein's in here, right? Rubenstein. All right. Awesome. Capablanca. You think it's Capablanca next? I think he's in there. 
Capablanca. Yeah. Let's guess the next one. Smith's Love. I'll say it's Smith's Love. Smith's. How am I so good? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's the last one? I don't know. It is Smith's Karpov, Love. I guess? Gotta be Karpov. The fifth one. Oh, it's Fisher. Dang it. <laughs> that was a real curveball, though. That was a real curveball. And then that's that's it. And then he recommends other stuff. Okay. So we got five end game players to go through. We could probably get get through like two a lesson. Two, okay, probably. Yeah. Maybe do a trial. I want to get done so we can do middle game stuff. 